Type 2 diabetes is the most common form of diabetes. It is a chronic, lifelong disease marked by high levels of sugar in the blood. By 2020, almost 10% of Canadians will be living with diabetes. If diabetes is not well managed, type 2 has the potential to shorten your lifespan by 5 to 10 years, leading to disabling and life-threatening illnesses such as heart disease, stroke, and high blood pressure. New Canadians, especially those of African, Caribbean, Latin American, and South Asian heritage, will be at greater risk for acquiring type 2 diabetes. Hi, I'm Nurse Vivia. I have been working at this Diabetes Prevention Center for over five years. And along with our team of experts, we have educated thousands of people about our national healthcare strategy targeting type 2 diabetes. How do you know if you are at risk for getting type 2 diabetes? Well, here's a checklist of questions you should ask yourself. Are you 40 years of age or older? Do you have any family members with type 2 diabetes? Are you of African, Caribbean, Latin American or South Asian descent? Do you have health complications that are associated with diabetes? Have you given birth to a baby of more than 9 pounds? Were you diagnosed with gestational diabetes? Do you have high cholesterol or other fats in the blood? Do you have high blood pressure? Are you overweight, especially around the middle? Have you ever been diagnosed with polycystic ovary syndrome? Do you have health complications that are associated with diabetes? If you've answered yes to any of these questions, you're more at risk of developing type 2 diabetes. What you should do is go to see your healthcare provider or go to your diabetes center to learn more about preventing type 2 diabetes. The three important numbers that you need to know to manage or prevent type 2 diabetes are 1. Your waist to hip ratio 2. Your BMI number and 3. Your fasting glucose levels First, I'll explain your waist to hip ratio which is literally calculated by measuring your waist and your hip. The waist to the hip ratio is the best tool for determining if your abdominal measurements are in a healthy range. All we need is a tape measure. So first of all, I'm going to measure your waist. Your waist is that area just below your rib cage and just one inch above your belly button. So next, we will be measuring your hip. Your hip is a little bit lower than your waist and the broader area around your bottom. Then, divide your waist measurement by the hip measurement.
statistics show women with a waist to hip ratio within the 0.75 range are less susceptible to major diseases. Men with a waist to hip ratio less than 0.9 similarly have been shown to be healthier. If your waist to hip ratio is higher than 0.9 for men or 0.78 for women respectively, you are outside the healthy range. Excessive fat around the waist is a major risk factor for diabetes. The body mass index is a statistical and mathematical method of measuring your height in relationship to your weight. All you need is your actual height and weight, no guessing. Now, go to the BMI calculator on the Women's Health in Women's Hands portal website. Enter your height in either feet or centimeters and your weight in either pounds or kilograms. Then hit calculate. Your BMI should be between 20 and 25. Although the BMI is a very accurate way of determining obesity, the waist to the hip ratio is still the best tool for determining if your abdominal measurements are in a healthy range. When used together, the waist to hip ratio and the BMI provides a quick, non-invasive snapshot of your physical health. Finally, let's talk about fasting blood glucose. Some providers will refer to it as your fasting plasma glucose, but most people will refer to fasting blood glucose as simply their sugar. Fasting blood glucose will identify how much sugar you have in your blood. It is a test that is conducted once you have fasted, meaning nothing to eat or drink for approximately eight hours prior to taking that blood test. The normal range of a fasting blood glucose is between four and six millimoles per liter of blood. If it's outside the normal range for too long and left untreated, serious life-threatening outcomes could occur, and that might include diabetes coma or even death. Your fasting blood glucose can be obtained by going to your family physician or your nurse practitioner and requesting the results of your fasting blood glucose. If the fasting blood glucose has been done greater than one year ago, then you can request a new fasting blood results. Remember, when you're having your blood test done, the doctor must check off this box to be sure that you're checking for your fasting blood glucose. If your BMI, waist to hip ratio, fasting blood glucose is at the top range or above the recommended range, you can refer yourself to Women's Health in Women's Hands Diabetes Educational Center. For more information, go to whiwh.com.